When winter hits, we all know how important it is to stay warm. But have you ever wondered how buildings keep that warmth inside, even on the coldest days? Or why certain materials are used to keep the heat in, while others don't seem to help at all? Today we're diving into the fascinating world of how insulation materials work and the science behind how they keep our homes, workplaces, and even vehicles at just the right temperature. Insulation may seem like a simple concept, but it's packed with unique materials and technologies that play a huge role in everyday comfort and energy efficiency. Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Let's start by understanding the basic principles of heat transfer. Heat naturally moves from warmer areas to cooler ones. When it's cold outside, heat from the inside of a building tries to escape, and in the summer, the opposite happens. The outdoor heat tries to sneak into the cool, air-conditioned rooms. This is because of three main types of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction happens when heat flows through solid materials, like when you touch a hot stove and feel the burn immediately. Convection occurs in fluids, which includes both liquids and gases. It's when heat moves through the air or water, carrying warmth with it. And radiation is the transfer of heat through electromagnetic waves, which doesn't require any direct contact. Think of how sunlight warms your skin, even if you're not touching anything hot. Insulation materials are designed to slow down these forms of heat transfer. Their role is to create a barrier, trapping heat where it belongs and stopping it from leaking out or getting in. But not all insulation materials are created equal. Some are better at resisting conduction, others at blocking radiation, and some are optimized to counteract convection. The effectiveness of insulation is measured by what's called the R value. A higher R value means better insulation. Different materials have different R values, and the right choice depends on climate, building design, and specific needs. Let's start with one of the most common insulation materials, fiberglass. Fiberglass is made of fine strands of glass woven together to form a fluffy material, which is excellent at trapping air within its structure. This trapped air is crucial because air itself is a poor conductor of heat meaning it doesn't transfer warmth very well. Fiberglass insulation essentially slows down the process of conduction, making it much harder for heat to pass through it. Plus, since it's filled with air pockets, it also minimizes convection within the material. This dual resistance to heat transfer makes fiberglass a popular choice in walls, attics, and other areas where heat loss or gain is a concern. However, fiberglass has some downsides, Installation can be tricky, and the tiny glass fibers can irritate the skin and lungs, which is why professionals usually wear protective gear when handling it. Another type of insulation you may have seen is foam board insulation. Unlike the fluffy nature of fiberglass, foam boards are rigid, usually made from polystyrene, polyurethane, or polyisocyanurate. These materials are excellent at resisting heat flow and can offer a higher R value per inch compared to fiberglass. Foam boards are dense, which means they prevent conduction very effectively. They also block air and moisture from passing through, which helps keep a building envelope tight. You'll often find foam board insulation used in places where space is limited, but a high R value is needed, such as on the exterior walls of buildings. In recent years, Newer versions of foam boards have been developed with reflective foil on one side. This adds an extra layer of protection by reflecting radiant heat, which makes foam boards useful in hot climates where keeping heat out is just as important as retaining warmth in cold climates. Loose fill insulation is another versatile option, often made from cellulose, fiberglass, or even recycled materials like newspaper. It's usually installed by blowing it into place, filling every nook and cranny in an attic or wall cavity. Loose fill works well in spaces with irregular shapes or hard-to-reach areas because it conforms to the shape of the space it fills. This type of insulation is effective against conduction, 
as it traps air within the tiny particles, similar to fiberglass. Cellulose loose fill insulation in particular is treated with a fire retardant material to make it safe for homes, while its recycled content makes it an eco-friendly choice. Spray foam insulation is known for its impressive ability to create an airtight seal. This material starts as a liquid and expands on contact to fill gaps, cracks, and hard-to-reach areas, making it ideal for a complete insulation envelope in buildings. Spray foam can either be open cell or closed cell, and each type has its specific applications. Open cell spray foam is softer and less dense, which makes it flexible and great for soundproofing. Closed cell spray foam, on the other hand, is denser, with tightly packed cells that resist both air and moisture infiltration. Closed cell spray foam has a higher R value per inch than open cell foam, which makes it one of the best insulators on the market. However, it's also more expensive and requires professional installation as it needs special equipment and safety measures. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Each insulation material has its own set of strengths and weaknesses. Fiberglass is affordable and effective but requires careful handling. Foam board provides high R values with limited space. Loose fill fills small, irregular spaces with ease. And spray foam offers unmatched airtight sealing and insulation. In modern construction, it's not uncommon to see a combination of these materials used together. For example, foam boards may be used on external walls, fiberglass and interior walls, and spray foam in areas where sealing is critical, like around windows or door frames. By layering these materials in strategic ways, builders can create a highly effective thermal barrier that significantly reduces energy costs and increases comfort. Using the right insulation materials in the right places can make a huge difference, not only in comfort, but in energy savings as well. When a building is properly insulated, it takes less energy to maintain a consistent temperature. This means lower heating and cooling bills and a reduced environmental footprint. So next time you feel the warmth on a cold winter day or enjoy a cool room in the summer heat, remember, it's all thanks to the insulation materials quietly working in the background. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.